getting started, you need your fabric, your interfacing, your pattern, which is available at capsupplyco.com, and a sewing machine. And we're using a Singer Heavy Duty. And links to all the supplies will be available in the description below. When you print the pattern out, you should have a top, side, and a brim. So start by taking your top and tracing that on the fold. And then only trace towards the curves on both ends and leave that flat edge uncut so you can unfold it and have a full piece. Then go ahead and cut that out. Now take your side piece, place it on the fold, and do the exact same thing. And now that you have the top and side cut out, it's time to apply the interfacing, and we're going to hold off on the brim for now. And we are using fusible interfacing, so you will need an iron to apply this. As you can see, we're using a piece of paper to help apply this. Our iron kept getting too hot and melting through the interfacing, so go ahead and do what you want, but this definitely helped us apply the interfacing. Also, you don't need to buy fusible interfacing. I just like using it because it helps keep it in place and it's a lot easier to sew together in the end. Then go ahead and cut your access interfacing off. Now take your top panel and you're going to want to sew that back opening with the right sides together. Now flip it over and apply a top stitch. And you can apply a top stitch on both sides of the seam, but for this video, we're only gonna do it on one side. And it's really your preference and what look you're going for. Now grab a piece of chalk and mark the middles of both your patterns, and this is easily done by just folding the pattern in half. This helps keep your top and side aligned for when it's time to sew. Place your right sides together and as you can see the opposite curves are going together and pin in the middle and on both ends and if you need to add more pins go ahead and do it. So I like to start sewing in the middle and work out towards the ends. This just helps me keep everything centered.
and when you get towards the end curves definitely take your time work with the fabric don't pull it just keep working it around and sewing it and it's going to take a little bit of practice to get this part down and i'll definitely say this is the hardest part of making this cap is getting these curves nice and perfect and honestly i'd recommend practicing this a few times on just some random fabric so that way you really get it down and don't waste material Now you can start to see the shape of the hat. So from here, trim some notches in the access fabric around the curve. So we're gonna show you two different options for adding on your bias tape. And these are just two different bias tape folders. The one on the right is just one you can get at any hobby store and the one on the left is available at capsupplyco.com. We are going to be using the one on the left just because it's a little bit easier for us to use and we've been using it for a while. But honestly, they both do the same thing, so use whatever you're comfortable with. Whatever one you're using, line it up with your presser foot and then just tape it right on your machine. You definitely are going to want to make sure this is secure so that way nothing's moving around when you're sewing on that bias tape. And now we're going to be showing you how to set up your twin needle. And this is super simple. Just install like a normal needle, set your machine to zigzag with zero width, and thread two spools of thread the same exact way. Now all you have to do is cut your bias tape to the measurement of the folder and you're ready to start sewing. And you totally don't have to use a bias tape folder. We just find it looks way more professional. It's a lot easier than doing two separate top stitches. If you do go this route, you're going to want to trim down that seam allowance just a little bit so it doesn't get all bunchy. Then flip your top right side out and just start sewing right in the center of that seam. And you'll see that the twin needle will have stitches on both sides of that seam and it'll look really nice. And make sure you cut your bias tape long enough so you can get this whole seam in one go. Definitely take your time around the corners. It might be a little tricky at start, but the more you do this, the easier it will get. And as you can see, you have a nice double stitch around the outside and on the inside, your seam is covered. So this helps if you're not going to be using a lining. Moving on to the brim, the pattern comes with the brim template, but we're actually using our own. 
and we got this off of catsupplyco.com and it looks really nice on flat caps especially with this pattern so pretty much all you're doing is making a sleeve for that brim so trace around whatever brim you're using now take it into a straight stitch exactly on the line you just traced Now take your scissors and cut about a quarter inch from that seam. Now go ahead and flip it right sides out and slide your brim into place. Once you have your brim in position and nice and tight, go ahead and take a zipper foot or any narrow presser foot and sew along the inside of the brim. As you sew, kind of pull the outside of your fabric away from your brim so that way it's nice and tight. Now to finalize the brim, you're going to want to go ahead and add a brim stitch. We did ours about a quarter inch away from the outside of the brim. Trim about a half an inch away from the inside of the brim. This will allow room to attach your brim to the crown. Now go ahead and mark the center of your crown and the center of your brim and line these up and get ready to sew. And again, we start at the center and work towards the outside because this really helps keep that brim centered. Now that you have your brim attached to your crown, you're going to want to go ahead and tack the center of your front down to the center of your brim. We found it's best by just feeling with your fingers, flipping it inside out, keeping that hold, and then just tacking it down. As you can see, we didn't hit the dead center, but that's totally fine. Just flip it inside out again and stitch just a little further. Now moving on to the lining, and this is cut and sewn the exact same way as the outer layer, but just don't add the top stitching.
Now you're going to take your lining in your outer layer and put your lining inside your outer layer with wrong sides together. And make sure that all the back seams are lined up. And then go ahead and sew around the entire bottom, attaching all the layers together. There you go, your lining is in and covering up all the seams on the inside of the cap. Now we're going to be installing the sweatband and you can go ahead and make your own sweatband. You pretty much just fold the fabric in half and sew it in, but we're using a professional one because I think it looks better and it just feels better in the end. Lay the wrong side of the sweatband to the right side of the crown. Then just start sewing and slowly working around the bottom part of the crown. And again, we are using a zipper foot for this process. It just makes it a little bit easier for when you get to the brim section. definitely take your time around the brim section you're just sewing on the access fabric and you want to get as close to the brim as possible and not get any of the other layers caught up Once you near the end, go ahead and fold up the end of your sweatband so that way you don't have a raw edge when you go to finish it. Go ahead and do a tack stitch on the other half of your sweatband to keep it from flopping around. Make sure it's lined up so that way the sweatband looks like one full circle. And there you have it, your flat cap is complete. And definitely do this multiple times. It's gonna take a while to perfect this pattern. The more you make, the better they will get. I promise you that. So definitely don't give up after one cap. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you think, and we're gonna keep videos coming at you, so stay tuned.